Well, cross-examination protecting Matt. Nah, at this point, it... Okay. You no, know, there's no point All to right. stop. Would you say that that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. <laughs> if you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit to crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. <laughs> They didn't teach that to us in school, at least not from what I remember. Wow, what school did you go to, Phoenix? We don't question that. May I continue now? Sometimes I wonder if he really actually got it. <laughs> so would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt Ungar. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. Angard himself didn't know anything about the press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Anyway, the important thing here is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree. Miss Andrews, please correct your testimony, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? <sighs> I know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. But didn't you already testify earlier that Mr. Ungard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover for Ma Mr. Ungard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. Hmm, I keep trying, but I can find no flaws with what Miss Andrews has said. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, however. The judge is glaring straight at Mia. He's glaring at you, smart guy. <laughs> you can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and his murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the jamming ninja's costume. We're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matt's Hakama. Isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh, looks like you were out fox again, Mr. Wright. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Thank goodness me, I can still look at me. <laughs> With an icy stare, yes. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. Everybody's taking pity on you. Wait... There's probably one thing probably to precise on this autopsy report because it's not a hundred percent accurate. But that's the problem. It says the report he was strangled and then stabbed with the knife. 
Yeah, the, 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 the missing detail here is the stabbing came after he died. So he wasn't strangled, then stabbed, and then he died. It's It was strangled, he died, and then he got stabbed. But the thing is that if you see where the knife is... I get what you're meaning. It's just that you're, she's saying that the button was torn off during the fight. I can't see it being turned off during the fight if... If he was stabbed after. Well, the thing is, it's a little more simple than that. How will you strangle the man with a scarf? If you had to do it. True. How would you do it? No, that's a question I need you to answer. How would you strangle with a scarf? From behind, right? Exactly. Now, what's the problem with that? How would the button come off? If Pretty much. Off. So then would I still have to... Rep would, would this still be the thing to, to, to show, though? Because there's nothing else that I can... Not pretty sure that's the one. Yeah, I just, it's just that there's nothing else that I could show that would do anything. Worst case, it's, just, it's two bars. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Strangulation. The knife stabbed to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off the costume. When? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Exactly, which means it is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Ugh. That's right, Miss Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off of the victim's already dead body. Order, order. What is the meaning? What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Yeah. It was planted. Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean that you know the, what murderer wanted to do with this button? What was it? To pin... Yeah, to pin the crime on, on Ungard. That's, like, it, someone was trying to frame him. That makes sense. There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. and Guard. There is no way anyone would put a bloodied button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. and Guard was set up by the real killer, of course. Then the real murderer is... Uh, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. Unguard, is... Once again, there is no one else in this that could have done it. Miss Adrian Andrews. I choose you. <laughs> you are... What is she, a Pokemon now? <laughs> Jesus. I mean, toss a Pokeball at her. We'll see. Mr. Corridus Killer. What? 
the glasses broke again. <laughs> she needs another pair. Order, 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 Mr. Wright. This is very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews. But, uh, preposterous. You can't stick any of that onto me. I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. <sighs> Tisk. That's one more pair. But then, what, what about the button that was found in Matt's... We just proved this, dude! This button was removed from the victim's blood after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Angar was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Akama. Uh, damn, another pair. And that's another pair. The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him from his nap, which is you, yet again, Miss Andrews. Uh, I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. Ooh. The, that costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, I... But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case, and it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at this time. That's right! That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah. And to top it all off, there is this photo, which is shorter person walking. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe this nickel samurai was Mr. On Guard. He would have been too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? P please stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I, I, I refuse to testify. What was that? There's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something. It can incriminate me. Well, uh, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually... Thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ungard's room. Adrian Andrews. Uh, yes? Think hard about what we've just discussed. Understood? All right. That's it. That's when Francesca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things looked bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there is still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done? <laughs> What's wrong, right? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? Uh, What's so humorous, Miss Edgeworth? I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor. But 
Everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. But what? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corrida. Miss Andrews, you, did you want to kill Mr. Corrida? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There's nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. No, she's taking that defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss and uh, Adrian Andrews had refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true. In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. At, at tomorrow's trial... Tomorrow... We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. That's not necessary. The trial. Please continue to trial. What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... That's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please, let the trial continue. If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... Hmm? But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Damn it. Now then, this court is... It is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edward, what are you? It's true that Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Uh, yes, that is very true. But actually, there is one little thing uh, that I'm curious about, Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up, not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened when she did first discovered the victim's body. Oh my god, we're doing this again? Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. <sighs> Fudge. Oh my god. <clears throat> I don't know what this is, what it is about Edward today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. Where is testimony when I found the body? Oh, boy. Again. That glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan... He was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower face over. <sighs> so you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, 
Please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what in the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Oh, that Mr. Right, you may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination when I found the body. Can we skip this? Because I think I, I mean, if you if if you know the answer, I'm fairly sure you can go straight for it. It's gotta be this one. And what can you present to change that? It's the crime photo. Because the crime photo has a knife, dude. If she says that she didn't notice anything, how she would have noticed the knife. Unless she's the one that planted it. So that's the only thing I could think of. And I think I'm right. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? Ah! Uh, what's the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There is a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corridor's chest. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that there was a dead that that here was a dead man. Ah! Um, that's... well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Y your point is... Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Ah! And your lie has proven one thing very clearly, that you are the real killer. No! Looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt Ungard, is not guilty after all. That... but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It, it... it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I tell you. It was Matt. I swear it. He's the one who killed Juan. You're the one who refused to testify, and your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. And there's no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Mountain Guard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is... is it over? Have we... Have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Mount Ungar. <sighs> Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. The absolute real truth? What are you? Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted the silly idea in your head. <coughs> Francesca! <coughs> <coughs> as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Madame Guard will go free, and in his place, you will become the guilty party. But th that's... that's a lie. I, I don't believe you. What? I... I was told, if I spoke, if I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I, I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francesca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. 
then, than right now, Miss Andrews is. Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Moncana. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt on guard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words right now, and is clinging on to them. But then what should we do? This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All I have to do now is, is get our not guilty. That is my only priority. Hmm. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help. Please. Someone help me. Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. The court can continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right. I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who is the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there, right? Come now. What will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But, I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. Well, Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure. The certain guard would get an acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this, is this how you really want this trial to end? Be, be, be quiet. How dare you? You... You're trying to trick me. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edward. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. Y you're wrong. Oh, God. What a shame. Huh? I had hoped things wouldn't come to this, however... Well, what is it, Mr. Edward? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S stop Miss Edgeworth. Miss Witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Oh, son of a <sighs> stop. Please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Ah! Uh, that's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report! What will you do now, witness? You know what I'm about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her dependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop. I beg you. If people find out, if people find out, I, I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is no concern me, uh, to me. Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die... I will pull the truth from your still-breathing lips, no matter what I have to do. <sighs> so will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk, but please help me. Nothing matters anymore. Witness testimony, my crime. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife. 
and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Stamped a body with a knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin, to pin the blame on a certain person. A certain cowardly man. Uh, what do you mean by all of this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt. That scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Coida, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. Well, what? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Yes, you're right. Please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Fudge. Cross-examination, my crime. I don't know what the right thing. But you could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck. That scarf is a part of the Jammy Ninja's costume, so I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. Oh, that was weird. The way they did that. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Swan... He was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop one and silence him for good. That's when I thought I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. Some of the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. There's still something not right though. It doesn't add up. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. So you're the one that's uh, to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. A horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button, somehow I could make Matt look even more uh, suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in a strong guard to Kama. Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? An inconvenience. There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. Lotta. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lotta. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. Mm, that's an assault bag for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. And that's why she went out. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is the secret? That I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. 
was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So after that, you went back to Mr. Ungod's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Hakama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. Oh my word, what does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt on guard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should under no circumstances confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Miss Wright. But, but... Mr. Edward, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. I was gonna say, like, she still would be arrested, huh? That is all. Court is adjourned for today. Son of a biscuit. They're gone. Today's... Today's trial. It's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? <gasps> Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wonder if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What ex exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright, I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. <sighs> I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not, but it's still a strange card if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness that card. Give it to me. Hurry. Uh, Edgeworth. Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This, I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. I, I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen Edward so emotional before. That card. What in the world is it? What does it mean? Ah, uh, Yeah. Well, things did not go according to plan. No, they did not. Oh. Well, <laughs> in the next episode, then oh, I don't even know what's gonna happen because we technically finished a trial, and I don't know what's gonna happen to Maya. And but I, I assume we're supposed to investigate again. I mean, that's what it says on the save. That's basically what it's going to be, so I... This is too much, dude. This is too much. All right. Uh, this was Phoenix Wright, uh, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. Uh, I'm Edo, and that was Nightshade <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> well, Maya's...
at a good run. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just, damn it. That's not funny. <laughs> Poor Maya. Oh, uh, ugh. I hope we can find out all this. This is too much. <laughs> And I can't tell which is worse now, this or the, huh. This or what? The previous, uh, the previous. Oh, no, there is no question here. We we don't talk about the last case. We don't talk about the last. We forget that last case. Yeah, I guess that one was really bad. Hey, Hi. look at look at it the right way. At least Edgeworth's here. Yeah, that's true. And with that, we are out of here. Bye. Would you like some juice? No. <laughs> <laughs>